if you just tell us, me, uh, who you are. Do, do we look? Yeah, look, look into me all the time. Okay. Um, who, who you are and what you think you do or hmm. what you do. You want to go first? Sure. This is Dave Stump. <laughs> and what I think he does, yeah. uh, he's a uh, creative genius. He uh, uh, has uh, invented quite a few and, and, and uh, developed quite a few uh, amazing technologies and uh, uh, innovations in the cinema world, um, none the least of which is some uh, uh, motion... Uh, Data capture. Data capture. Uh, uh, motion encoding as well. Uh -huh. Motion uh, some, motion control. Some three space reference uh, uh, doohickeys that are uh, currently coming in vogue. He's also a member of the uh, he's ASC. Uh, and uh, a member of the ASC Technical Council. Did well I get said. that? Yes, yeah. well said. And, uh, and just very highly thought of by just about everybody in the industry. Including myself, and I don't think highly of many people. So that's Dave Stump. And this is my friend Scott Billups, who is a director, producer, cinematographer, writer, extraordinaire, professor, and inventor as well. And he, uh, in my opinion, above all, is a storyteller. Oh, there you go. That's, that's a that's a I'll great that is a compliment. Great qualification Amazing. in our industry. And he's written a neat book, as far as I understand it. Oh, thank you. Oh, <clears throat> the, I should have brought brought you one. <laughs> oh, I have one in the car. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it with you. Well, so tell us what that book is. Uh, well, I've written actually eight books, yeah, but the, no, the latest is the third edition yeah. of digital movie making, yeah. and it's uh, basically just uh, you know, uh, one production mule's point of view slogging through the industry as it changes. And I, thought, I believe I wrote in a review, what this, what this man don't know ain't worth knowing. There, there <laughs> have been those that have said nice things, mm. unprovoked, well, as it were. Let's get past the loving. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, okay, so this is about high definition. And um, uh, just as a matter of interest, what do you think the, the public is being sold as high definition? What do you think that, that they're, that's being served up for the public? What I think is being served up for the public at the moment <clears throat> is the best, the best possible image capture technology that we can invent, dumbed down and corrupted all the way to the television set at home. Um, let's start with 1920 by 1080 at least in 444, uncompressed and see if we can turn it into MPEG compressed 720p uh, over a, a low bandwidth cable or digital satellite system, or for that matter, over the air. Yeah. Do you concur with that? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, except technically there is no such thing as HD. HD is a marketing term. It's not a technical specification. So technically, anything with one more image line raster than PAL is technically HD. 626. 626 is HD. Is HD. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Sad, but true. So, you know, HD is, is a marketing term. So if you really want to talk about, you know, digital specifications, uh, with it, in lieu of true standards, uh, you know, we're, we're in a position where we actually have to do techno speak to, to be accurate. And, you know, the market has no capacity for techno speak. They want a quick, easy, you know, name that they can glue onto things. They want a shiny little metal tag that says HD. And I understand that. You know, the marketing lobe in my brain understands that, but it doesn't make it realer <laughs> or easier to deal with. And weeding your way through the hyperbole of sales pitch Ooh. is extraordinarily difficult, especially even for the most technical of us who are the image makers and those crafting the stories, to, to wade your, th your way through uh, the vast array of tools that are being presented to us now is an extraordinary, awesome responsibility. But I call it a responsibility deliberately because in order to tell the right the story the right way these days, you as a cinematographer are obliged to know all of the tools and master them. 
If you don't know what all of the tools available to you are, how can you tell the story well? How can you pick the right tool for the job? Totally true. Okay, well, with, with that in mind. And there's a lot of digital pigs with lipstick. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> <laughs> with that in mind then, that there's a kind of, uh, uh, kind of illusory thing being, and it's basically a marketing thing for the, for the public to yeah. serve up some more technology to be bought and all that stuff to try to unravel what HD might conceivably be now at a proper level and where it might go. That's what I said to you before is, can we start to take apart the process from, from light at the beginning, right the way mm. through lens coatings well, and lenses, or do you think this is You can't start with light because you're starting with a thermonuclear event that's a little out of our reach. Okay. But what you do have to start with is is the, dam the data band pass, the neural junction, the synaptic junction of the brain. Okay. What, you know, how much information can the brain absorb? And so when you look at the physiological aspects of uh, stimuli, you're dealing with uh, 1.2 gigabits a second, average human, somewhat educated brain. So um, yeah, that, that really interested me, that little, that little comment at the back end of that somewhat educated so there's a kind of proposition in here that uh the more uh learning generates more synapse connections and therefore oh. the, the bandwidth increases yes yeah. yeah. without getting into okay. genetics or no, anything no, it's, 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 an it's, it's well know. proven well documented what a long established fact that you know okay. the more Do external yeah the brain is like a muscle the more you use it the stronger it gets exactly okay all right so we got this thing that we're yeah. dealing with so now you got to realize that uh, there's a, a, a lot of people out there that may not have a well-exercised brain, but they are still subjected to a vast amount of stimuli. And um, mixed amongst the 50,000 advertising messages and media messages per day in an average person's you know, subjected to, I mean, we can sit here and see more than 100 marketing messages just from any position in this room really you mm -hmm. your sandals your you know it's eight Deal. eight on you yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah. uh breaking through that media clutter breaking through that kind of clutter that's why hd has to have a label yeah because there's no way you can define no, no there's no time in life to define things further so it's not hd isn't a bad thing it has to fit into that media structure. And then to, to get the signal to register in the, you know, <clears throat> as entertainment, it has to fit into the data rate going into the brain with room to spare for enjoyment. And you got to understand that when you're sitting in a, let's say you're sitting in a theater, you've got sound, so you can't use that whole gigabit for just image only. It's got sound. And then you've got... So your touch is gonna to shut down. That's why comfortable theater seat, that's why theater seats are generally comfortable. They want your tactile sensations to shut down. Mm -hmm. And taste, you know, popcorn, you know, a lot of neutral, you know, a lot of tastes are involved with theater going that either blow out your taste buds immediately, milk duds, butter and salt. Butter and salt, you know, that's the whole thing is to shut down everything but sight and sound. And once you do, then you can dedicate, you know, you don't have to be educated to, to de dedicate so the what, band what, you, what you give me here is that uh, I'm, I'm, I was proposing we look at light and the lens and that. You, all right, let's go the other way. <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just Into saying, it doesn't, you were saying yeah. that's where it starts. It isn't. You've got okay. you to okay. understand what the, yeah, no, I, I get the your, media is. I get what's your, your point. Your, what's your data rate? I mean, you know this thing about, um, it, it doesn't matter where we go in this talk. Okay, so we can we can free flow. Um, there, it struck me. You know that moment at dusk when you're looking at the car brake lights up front, or maybe the uh, the traffic lights, and they're a bit too red and a bit too green. You know that moment, mm -hmm. the flickery moment, the moment where the rods and cones are doing the the switch over, and so you're kind of flickering back and forth. I, it's my contention in this mix somewhere that resolution has got this this borderland. This well, resolution is another marketing term. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, go on. Let's, instead of resolution, let's talk about human vision there as a go. phenomenon. I read a, a fabulous paper on the notion, the subject of human vision last year. And among the discoveries 
that I made by reading this paper was that the, the visual acuity of foveal vision, that is the center of our focus where we actually uh, derive 90% of the information from vision, varies in acuity between human to human, from one person to another. But human beings, theoretically, jet pilots and people who have been culled from the rest of the herd for their visual acuity, have been tested at in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 cycles per degree of visual acuity. That means cool. for, for one degree of human uh, vision, 60 to 80 cycles per degree. If you do, if you extrapolate that math onto a screen at one and a half screen heights away for uh, print, for a motion picture, print uh, print stocks can give us in the neighborhood, according to the calculations that I've read, probably 11 to 16 cycles per degree of visual acuity. HD technology gives us in the neighborhood of 20 plus cycles per degree at 1920 by 1080, one and a half screen heights away. Uh, 4K gives us in the neighborhood of 20 and change approaching 30 cycles per degree for true 4K. So you can see that all of the image, imaging chains that we have artificially created don't come close to what even the average human visual acuity is, which is between 30 and 40 cycles per degree. Okay, but you, you, there's a point in that mix where you're talking about the headroom for, for the other elements like enjoyment and engagement of narrative and stuff like that. So you need a bit of headroom mm -hmm. in the mix anyway. The question is how then follows how much how much headroom do you need in that in that 60 cycles in total you say 60 to 80 okay 60 to 80 and i was just wondering about 8k that's in, in process the... though see that's once okay. it's in the process that's 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 overall capacity yeah. okay where where the amount of visual acuity that seems to be required to distract a human being from his troubles his cares his trials his yep. tribulations his woes is honestly right down there with print from, from film or NTSC video. It is good enough to distract us long enough to, to make us not care for two hours and watch a story about someone else's problems. And that is the, that's the beauty of what we do is when we tell a story, we don't just tell our story, we get people to listen to our story and forget their own for an hour and a half or two mm -hmm. hours. And uh, just good enough uh, means that uh, NTSC video at 525 or uh, print stock at 14 um, cycles per degree of viewing angle with a good soundtrack, good music, um, a dark enough theater, the right uh, flavored popcorn and soda will distract you from, uh, from your troubles for an hour and a half if the story is well told. Right. You're just hitting here. This is what's interesting for me here is because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to actually full up the full cycle, the full, full bandwidth with the art thing. Because there's, an, there's another take besides entertainment, isn't there? There's uh, occupation in a certain kind of way that delivers something over and above. The, entertain the entertainment function can, can be a lockout for a couple of hours. It's po it might be possible in this mix somewhere that you deliver something other than uh, the simple act of entertainment which is called art, isn't it? I mean, do you know what I mean? It might yeah. be some other place. That, that's kind yeah. of, that's or really education. I agree. I mean, what art you just said is really, really <laughs> useful for me. Yeah. Really useful. Because that borderland, I've mm. actually found that in a few pieces. The borderland of uh, belief and disbelief, that shifting place, is actually a place where the audience locates on and feels free in and has the space to create their own thing. So there's a different element from the entertainment thing where you're going, okay, just wash, give me the tsunami of experience right now. You know, the sensorium is fully located in this movie and I'm, Right there, well, there, there is. Well, well, don't get that confused. You know, on, if you're trying on. to enlighten someone or teach something, you actually have to back off mm -hmm. substantially. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the old uh, adage uh, mm -hmm. in documentary work, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want some someone, if you're actually the object is for somebody to retain some bit of information, you know, you have to approach it in the basic structure of tell them what you're going to show them, show them how you're going to show them, show them. And then start your program. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, then, and then tell them what you told them. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> and then when it gets <laughs> to that moment where you're going to tell them something, put up the most banal environment, bland, 
cut down on your audio, cut down on everything so that all their senses are dropped and all they can do is retain and then build it back up again so you encapsulate mm -hmm. that retention event. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's this, how you, this, you get this, people to I mean, this, remember things. Can that feed into movie making with HC? Let's well, yeah, that's let's the thrill point. Movie. That's the thrill point, the crux of a Scream movie. Look at all the really great horror movies. And what goes on at the most critical moment? It's not a lot of activity. It's generally an ECU, a reaction, very subtle. Look at the palette, very muted. I mean, we're talking good, good work by people that know their craft. You know, yeah. very mute. That helps, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is da -da -da -da, Johnny. And Doe. then blammo with a hand on the throat. Yeah, um, yeah. It's and that contrast is probably the most important contributing dramatic factor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In this in this pursuit of uh, the cycles per second or or what or per, or per degree or whatever whatever however we, we want to like frame the mix, in pursuit of that. We, what we've got on a contemporary high definition landscape, I use the word high definition because it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of where we are on the digital terrain at the moment. Um, we've got a bunch of developments. We've got the, we've got the corporate, uh, the big corporations delivering what they know how to deliver, which is some format. They like formats, don't they? I don't think you can, oh, I don't think gone. it's safe to say they know how to deliver it. Okay, go on. Yeah. They don't, the, they deliver something. And this this is not just the, the big corporations, this is human nature. And all of humanity does the same thing to each other. They, if, if you want to make something, everyone can tell you what you did wrong, but no one can give you instruction to start you down the right path from, from the get-go. And uh, so the world says to you, you go make something and we'll tell you why we don't like it. I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, okay, but what... And, and so, it's not safe to assume that the manufacturing community knows what to build for us. Right. They just don't know where to go to have someone who is disinterested financially to give them uh, the proper input about what to build. How, who, where makes... Um, articulate demands, meaningful articulate demands of the manufacturing community. And that's an important, that's an important role to fill. And that role has to be filled from authenticity. It can't be filled from logical self-interest. And it's very hard for, in their defense, it's very hard for the corporate mentality to understand, to really understand when information is viable. Yeah, I mean, they could they could think somebody is the best director, shooter, writer, whatever, because they're going off of some project or some assumption that they're making. They don't really understand the lineage and where that came from, and you know that might have been something that was purloined, redone. The guy's mm -hmm. lawyer got him his name on top of the script, yeah, yeah. and you know they don't know what went into that, so without a, you know, a really in-depth understanding of the industry, which none of them have, how, do they know, how can they qualify the information, their input? Okay, yeah, really, and, and who do you ask for that information? Yeah. I, I you can't I'm just. Not gonna, I'm not going to get an easy, easy ride with you guys because I, rec I recognize that the, the reason you, you guys are who you are is because you've you got to think, you're, you're the outside the box thinkers, aren't you? I mean, that's well, a, he I, I definitely mean, that, is. That's a compliment, you know, <laughs> But, I but I'm trying to. My, my problem is I'm trying to get. A t I'm trying to get a t for these, for the watchers. They've got a terrain. I, I need to find a terrain that they understand, so that um, so they've got a way into it. You know. I mean, if we talk about the punters, the public, then we're talking about you know 1080p, 1080i, and all all that stuff, and the less and the lower the lower level kind of digerati, you know, who who won the red. They want the red because it's the great thing on the horizon. But actually, the truth is, they're probably going to get their hands on. Well, maybe they'll get their hands on. The red is the great thing on the horizon. Well, tell me, tell me the different. Tell me. But how it's not to because of the technology. It's because of a guy that's behind it. Yeah, but tell me, tell me how to understand the relationship between a simple Sony Cine Alta trip with, uh, where the, they've got an over thrown away pixels. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Now we're recording all the pixels. Mm -hmm. That's something. And you've got the Panasonics, which are kind of a little more honest product in a, 
kind of way. Do, would you agree? Well, whatever, whatever. So there's those kind of people, and then there's a Jim Janard and a kind of. You know, first of all, you can't tell say me, that really me. because okay. if if you if you go to Shinagawa, and you walk into this little tea room, <clears throat> in the back of the tea room is a, a little soshi <laughs> screen, and you walk past the soshi screen, there's a lovely lady at a desk, and that's the entrance, that's the bowel entrance to the bowels to Sony, right there. Yeah, I gotta go through a tea room to get there, and there's this huge guy standing by the door impeccably dressed in Armani <laughs> and the guy's 300 pounder and you know he can stop a bullet <laughs> that's how you get into Sony so you go into Sony and it's a huge tall building right this is Sony corporate you walk out the back door she's asking me to pull the sound down here but go on yeah mm -hmm. sorry the back door. go on you walk out the back door and there's a parking lot and you go halfway across this parking lot and there's a little wall it's about the atoll but you have to step over it and now you're in the back parking lot of Matsushita. It's not like they're different competing industries. And you got to understand Daibatsu. You got to understand okay. that, you know, just because you're predisposed to a, you know, American, you know, mecha corporate mechanism or a, you know, European corporate mechanism, it has nothing to do with reality. You know, your our predisp predispositions are you know, have nothing to do with technology. <laughs> In fact, our, our predisposition is we, you know, and it's, it's, the fund, it's in the fundamental nature of human beings. You know, we have television shows. Now, usually, usually this would be a problem in an interview, but we locate, we are, this sound is helping us locate in the US, so that's really cool. Bearing that in mind. Yeah, actually, right around the corner is your Hollywood sign. Like, yeah. Let's, let's let it just... Welcome Trump to Hollywood. <laughs> this is my life. Yeah. So we, we have a tendency, you know, we make TV series an hour long or an hour and a half long or a half an hour long for a reason and in a particular way. And that is we've got a half an hour to, to pose a problem or stage a dilemma and then solve it. And you've got to wrap it up. You've got to complete that story. And we, human beings crave that completion and they really, really love to have that wrap up and, and they've got to have meaning for everything. I mean, we're little meaning machines, you know? People can look at a grease stain on their plate and see the face of Mother Teresa for crying out loud. Put it on eBay and get money. Yeah, uh, if that's not creating meaning, what is? So, <clears throat> The, the outcome of that is that when we talk about these technologies, uh, we don't talk about them as an exploration of the technology. Everything that human beings do in discovering and discussing this technology is an effort to wrap it up, know what it is, define it, and put it away, and stop the exploration. But for me, the fun of the whole thing is the exploration of, of the technology. I don't want to put it away. I want to keep it out and keep tinkering with it. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to wrap it up in a nice with, little box with a bow so that I can say this is HD and that's not HD okay. and this is 4K and so, that's not 4K. <laughs> I just want to keep. You know, this is this is my car. Let me leave the hood T open. Tell me historically, what the hell 1920? Just give me a give me a placement. Why why 1920? Oh my God. Oh, because it's a multiple of uh, NTSC. Yeah, okay. it's a simple multiple. So we've yeah. been the the the, mm -hmm. the European system, the twelve fifty line, and a it's, lot of a lot of uh, excuse me, uh, but wouldn't you say a lot of formats and aspects are are just silicon tower mentality? Yeah, they're amortizations of existing yeah. technologies. Okay. Yeah. So we exist that, but we come out of an, 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 the, the analog thing. I mean, we were really good at like having a, 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 a electron beam and some magnets mm -hmm. switch off the beam create a rasp of stuff like that and you know we had the issues of how much glass can we manufacture at a given point you know all that stuff and then we go we digitize we say yes or no about I, I was in a I was in a post-production house in I don't know it must have been 81 and the the, the, the owner of the place he's he, he, he made stuff he made a two line a two line time-based corrector and if, it, if the bit of dropout was bigger the whole 
system blew up. But he said, yeah, my dad's been messing around with a computer and um, he's made this image and uh, we figure if we make 12 of them and split them up and, and we insulate That's them. That's Snell and Wilcox mm -hmm. uh, concept right there. Okay, so at that, that moment, we're traveling, we're traveling out of the analog into the digital, or have I got that wrong too? Well, no, because analog is, <laughs> is entirely based on good enough. You know, what's the minimum we can get away with? Color under. Look when color came in, you know, and, and then look at all the permutations color's gone through. How much can we, how can we make a, an image that looks better without actually being better? That's what analog video has, was always about. Digital, on the other hand, it ha has a, a kind of a different feel to it. Well, it's had enough of, of the community f ask or make the assumption, ask the questions from the perspective that good enough isn't. Uh, why can't we do better? And when when you think about that, uh, it is the challenge of the media right now because uh, good enough isn't good enough. People are wandering away from the theaters and not going back in again. So we've got to we've got to do better than good enough to put butts in seats. Yeah, and look at the crossover between uh, analog technology and digital technology. On on the analog side, you've got CCD technology, which a lot of people assume is digital. It's not. It's analog. CCD. You got three chips, red, green, and blue, and they, you know, we use a piece of glass to make them separate them the colors. But then we don't use all those colors and we throw away 93% or 89%. A bunch. Of, of, of the, the colors because yeah. we take all the green, we take, uh, we take 92% uh, of the red and 83% uh, of the blue or something like that. Right, or uh, we throw away uh, the vast majority, 83% of the blue, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We throw away a ton of it. And we throw away the vast majority of the red, uh, just to make an image that looks right to, to our eyes, because that's what our, our eyes do. I mean, we do not, you know, if, have you ever seen raw image? Mm. It, a raw 444 image? Mm -hmm. It looks weird. It's kind of flat mm -hmm. and very Gray. greenish and greenish green. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way the world really looks. It's only because of the unique construction of the rods and cones, to get back to your rods and cones, which actually filter away. We're, hunt, we're hunters. So we need to, you know, we evolve from an animal that needs to see the hard outline of an object moving in opposition to the environment around it so that we can track, run it down, kill it, and eat it. So our, <laughs> well eyes, <said. laughs> our eyes naturally enhance the contrast of things just because that's, mm -hmm. that's our genetics. Mm -hmm. It also, raise, in raising that contrast, it takes away of a lot of the, the, the haze that is naturally occurring in, in you know, a natural scene. So to give us a picture that feels right, CCDs, red, green, and blue, just like our eyes, has to throw away at least 80% of that image, or almost 80% of that image. That that's light. a lot, that light stream coming through the lens, but about, and so that's a lot of waste. CMOS, uh, charge coupled, uh, or uh, uh, metal oxide semiconductors. Complementary, complementary metal, metal oxide, oxide semiconductors. semiconductors. Thank you. <laughs> On the other hand, it's, a, it's a digital as opposed to analog, uh, consumes 10% of the energy, mm -hmm. right? And so it still has to do that calculation, but what, like a Bayer mask, so we put a little piece of, you know, colored sunglass on top of the uh, chip uh, as a filter. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in a Bayer filter, it's got twice as many green sunglass lenses as it does red and blue, and it gives us a corrected, quasi-corrected image. And so you've got two different, two different, entirely different uh, systems that are bundled together in HD. And totally different. And because, because of the science of manufacturing these things, there are prices to be paid with both scenarios for manufacturing um, light receptors in each individual way. There is a, a physical price to be paid and a physics price to be paid for both. So 
Nothing is the perfect world yet, but these are the systems that we use for accumulating image electronically. You were, you were talking about like um, we're not uh, we're not quite at the highest level that we need to be at this moment, and really, in a kind of way, you were talking about subject and content and that stuff. But is there a parallel in in, in technology as well? I mean, are we being kept away from that uh, apogee that we need to be at? Oh yeah. Okay. Tell For us, tell one me. specific and very easily definable reason, <laughs> let me see if I got a twenty in my pocket here. <laughs> This keeps us from getting there. Okay, go on. Economics. When I said the technologies all have a price and all have a cost, money is a big part of it. Yeah. And for good reason. Money is what enables us to create images and what enables us to create the technologies to create images. Money, money is evidence of civilization and culture. In fact, money is one of the most defining pieces of evidence of civilization because civilization entails that we have agreement and money is the ultimate human agreement. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> well, when you think about it, it is because what is this? What, what is this? You tell me what this is. You want me to respond? Yeah, I do. I, I think this is a part of uh, <laughs> this is a part of a, a group agreement. It's a part of a group agreement. Group agreement. You agree what this is well, worth? I don't think it's no, because uh, George has been printing the crap out of them. Yeah, but, unsupported. But that aside, <laughs> just the whole notion of this group agreement. Group agreement. Yep. And if if you don't agree that this has the same value to you, yeah, that that I agree it has the same value to me, right. then the only thing we can do with this stuff is build a bonfire out of it and warm our hands. Or, yeah. That's the only Bruce, good it Bruce could possibly do anyone. Okay. But so because we have it, <laughs> let me finish this yeah, thought, yeah, because exactly. we have this agreement, uh, this civilizing cultural agreement that we can exchange this for value, we can create artificial um, economies and artificial productivity that shows up in the most civil and cultural ways, and that is storytelling on big screens for the world to see. I think it is a direct outgrowth of civilization and culture that could not exist without money. Okay. Well, taking that and the delivery systems to deliver the, the stories, mm -hmm. Um, and I can, for some reason you conjured up in my mind a kind of it's a night landscape where it's a bit of a wasteland and there's a bonfire going on and there's a bunch of people sitting around it and there's burning a bunch money. of people <laughs> over there another bomb burning money another bonfire over there and, and those guys are saying look um, we had this older stuff but look we, we've just been thinking about this and we, it's called red mm -hmm. it's called red and you got the guys over there in a slightly bigger scenario because they're part of a defense company called Dorsa and you know they've got the similar kind of standards of at least of hunting for the resolution. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like why should there exist a dulcet and a red at this moment? I mean, because you've got a, a, quite an expensive version of that 4K thing. You've got a so-called cheap version of that 4K thing. You've got the Sony's and the Panasonic, and you've even got Jeff Crane's over there with his thing, Ooh, which well, never kind of manifested. I've, I've got it? a I've got a fabulous answer for that question. Uh, they should both exist and coexist because if there were only one of the two it would be twice as hard to talk someone with money into using it. But the fact that there is a choice or appears to be a choice means that I can go to someone and say oh you don't like this camera I'll use this other camera and that leverage alone gives me the opportunity to shoot something more in 4K than I would have gotten to shoot any other way. Okay. And I think if every camera manufacturer got on board and built their 4K solution, I sort of don't care who wins out economically. Yeah. I think any, anyone who wants to build a device that works in that environment 
floats everyone's boat a little higher. Right. I'm, I'm really enjoying the fact that you guys won't answer one question I give you. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is really good. No, no, it's, it's actually wrong footing my inquiry, We're, which is great. I don't and, mean to be offensive, but your questions are all based on incorrect predispositions. That is, that's fantastic, though. That's fantastic, because it's not what you say, it's what you don't say. So, well, but human but beings... I, li I like this. I like this. Okay. Okay, uh, human but I'd like it, but, if you were yeah. going to ask you a question about the surge towards resolution in some kind but of But see, life. there is, resolution is a marketing term. Okay, let me, tell me what the word is. What should the word be? Well, th that's the problem with resolution because are you talking color space? Are you talking data rate? Are you talking lines? Are you talking I'm latitude? Talking the most important thing, I think, I think, you know, I, I can speak for David. The most important aspect of resolution, of the generalized term that most people refer to as resolution, has nothing to do with color. Color is way at the bottom of the list. It has nothing to do with frame rate or the actual size, which are all things that are assumed to, to echo resolution. Yeah, okay. The most important thing with, about resolution is latitude. It is, it, we're talking about latitude. drama here. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about uh, capturing uh, a, and uh, uh, capturing the emotional, the play of emotions across the human face. So sort of modular transfer functions kind of went bang in my head there. Is that mm -hmm. an issue? Okay, mix? go back Good. physiologically. Yeah. You're you're a baby in the in the crib. What's the first thing that enters your cognitive senses? Is your mother's face and the play of emotions across the human face. And from then on, our world is encoded with emotional shifts. That's how we communicate. Words play a very small part. It's really the play of emotions across the human face. That is 100% transcribed in grayscale. The more grayscale, the more latitude, the more crayons between white and black in your, in your box of crayons that you're painting your world with, the more latitude in there, the greater the emotional connection, the greater the performance, that's why the great performances are all on film. It's not because we only use film when we're shooting great people. It's because that's the only way you can capture that much grayscale, okay. that many gr gray crayons. That's where that latitude is. And how are we, where are we in the mix at the moment? I mean, on a bright summer's day, say a thousand times black between black and white, film is... Human vision. Hmm? Oh, here, Dave's the expert in that. Gigantic amount of latitude. Human vision, white and black. Yeah. Bl uh, blowing out, this is white up here, blowing out and crushing in film. And then we go to the best digital, which would probably be somewhere down in here. Tell there you some, go. Tell me some numbers. Bright summer's day. This is, this is very summer. hard to quantify, but I'm, we're sitting in a brightly sunlit uh, environment out, right outside the window here. And I can look out, and with my eyes, I can see something that is, you know, at ISO 100 uh, for any imager. Would see be, that white house up there? Yeah, that would be. I can see the some furniture inside the window. 22, 22 and 20, change. Yeah, at ISO 100, 100%, right here. Right and the in the same moment, I can look over there and make out details in the black coat that's hanging on the chair over there, and to so photograph that. Thousand. Oh my God! Probably eighteen stops of latitude. Uh, more like twenty-ish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Twenty stops of latitude. So if we come down to the film level, what are we talking? Yeah, it's depends on the stock, but probably a nice slow, a nice, a slow uh, daylight stock. You daylight would probably stock. get uh, twelve stops of latitude. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand that maybe latitude I thirteen. Want them to, I want them to Latitude is different depending on who you're talking to. If you're talking to an engineer, they're talking for about nu uh, numerical equivalence. If you're talking to a cinematographer, they're talking about crush to blow. Uh, if you're talking to somebody in the audience, they're talking to comfort range. See, so everybody's got a different, you know, it's, yeah. the same, it's the same animal. Yeah. It's the blind men and the elephant. You know, parable all so over again. So we are we almost like um, twelve to fourteen stops. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it depends on the film stock. I, yeah. I, you know, the the high silver content black and white stocks 
we're 14, 15 stops of latitude. It was just a really interesting beautiful. game you can play. Okay. It, is you can take an old CCD lens. Okay, you take a, a good CCD camera, good broadcast CCD camera, and you take away everything but the lens, and you just keep unscrewing the screws until all you got is the lens, the lens mount, and the imaging block. And you pop off those three CCDs, right? Now, you go get yourself three CMOS chips, right? And you slap them on there. Because the CCD, it needed all three of those chips combined to make an image. But CMOS doesn't, it just needs one chip. So now you got three chips on there, right? So you figure out what your gain is, and you put a pair of sunglasses on two of them. You follow me on this? And so now you're artificially high di creating a high dy dynamic yeah, yeah. range. I wonder why this hasn't been pursued in a big way, but yeah. Oh, it is being pursued we can't in a talk very about big way. It. We're yeah. talking around the corners because yeah, yeah, we're okay. both probably under non-disclosures right, on many right. things. But, okay. but that's how you do it. That's where the future is. That's why the future is so exciting. And right now we're at a crossover point where we are capable. Pull a couple, bu anybody with a credit card can put, you know, the, the big image up on the screen right now. And they, they we're at a point where the image and sound are exceeding the data rate to the brain. We are at that point where anybody with a few bucks in their account mm -hmm. can exceed the sensory capacity of the brain, right? So now it comes back to, can you tell a story? Yeah. You know, but that's where we are. And right now, because of I, I really think because of CMOS, be, the reemergence of CMOS, CMOS has been around a long time, you know, but the reemergence of good quality CMOS, it's got some inertia behind it, so it's got some development coin in it. It's got some people actually taking it seriously, which is the problem. People just didn't take it seriously. It was too, ahead of, too far ahead of the curve. Everybody was comfortable with CCD. Well, they, they were comfortable with the economics of CCD. Exactamundo, which gets back to... <laughs> Davis little paper thing. Mm -hmm. right, right. So that it's it, you know you got to take that out. So now the thing Jim Gennard is doing that is totally renovating the industry is that he's saying yeah yeah they just don't cost that much. Well, big corporations never going to say that. But here's a guy that doesn't need our money and has <laughs> to, you know he's outside the agreement. He's outside the agreement. Yeah, and it's a lovely thing. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Because these guys don't come around so often, and when they do, they're almost never in my industry, you know. And here we got a guy that's spending the time to come into this industry and make these nice toys for us. Yeah. And these toys are just off the charts, you know. He's getting ahead of Moore's law, and it, in fact, the 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 Scarlet, if you track Moore's law, which is, you know, the the real definitive BS detector. You know, does it fit on Moore's Law or not? And that's how you tell if you're working with good technology or another digital pig with lipstick. You know, it's basically Moore's Law's delineator, and the scarlet is smack dab 100% on the Moore's Law vector where, right where it should be. Price, performance, quality, and speed. And they all intersect. It's four intersecting vectors. And, you know, anything can be plotted. Uh, I just got... Uh, uh, a new uh, little ram drive. Mickey wanted to take some stuff, mm -hmm. you know, she takes these to little, Japan with yeah. it. Yeah, and I got I got this little ram drive, and it's 16 gigabytes, it's as big as your thumbnail, and it cost me 40 bucks. Flashback. Unbe unbelievable. You know, but that goes on, excuse me, <sighs> that goes on the Moore's vector. And if you take that vector back to, say, 1985, you're going to find a one gigabyte drive about this big. It's going to cost you $6,000. And, and the data rates, you know, commensurate and everything's the same. And you can follow that all the way up. Moore's Law isn't a fluke. If, if it was, every technical manufacturer in the world would not invest their marketing strategies to it. So you... So to make any guesstimates or any prognostications, if you're not firmly aware of Moore's Law and how accurate it is and where everything has been as plotted on the various vectors of Moore's Law, you're just more bullshit. Excuse me. 
but that's what it is. It's without knowing what you're saying, it's just more random musings by self-centered individuals. When in fact, what's, what stands out as the tallest nail today is the individual who can examine technology without the constraints that the past imposes. Like a Jim Jadard. Exactly. Who's so arrogant, he doesn't care what the past was about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because and I mean, the and that's arrogance used in a, in a positive way. I suppose so. Wouldn't because, I mean, why do, we, why do we make movies at 24 frames per second? Because that's the lowest freak, frame rate that we could get away with. There, there, was, <laughs> there was a group of studio guys back in when, the 20s, yeah. who did an examination of frame rates of projection. And the Lumiere, it was based on the original mm -hmm. Lumiere work. And they found that somewhere around 20, 22 frames, 21, there was, there was not enough persistence of vision. And are we vision. talking about with a, slit, a couple of slits in the, in the wheel? Yeah, 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 that kind of stuff, yeah. At, yeah. at 22... Maybridge of, type stuff. At yeah, 22, yeah, yeah. at 21 of these pictures per second, there was not enough persistence of vision to, to see it as continuous motion. At 22, you started to perceive it as continuous motion. Add 10%, not 20, that's an economic decision, and you end up with 24 frames yeah. per second, uh, we'll give you 10% more, and we'll agree on a frame rate. 24 frames per second since time immemorial for cinema. And an even better example is the idiotic notion that we have to shoot at 29.97 frames per oh, second for yeah. video. <laughs> and that was because when, when they moved from monochrome television to color television at 30 uh, fields per second, they discovered, due to the electronics at the time, that there was an oscillation. There was a sympa yeah. sympathetic oscillation between a transformer in the bottom of the set and the audio subcarrier. So if they threw those frequencies off by, what was it, 0.1%, mm -hmm. uh, they could disrupt the oscillation, the feedback oscillation yeah. that happened. So we ended up with 29.97 frames per second as a legacy format extrapolated back to 23.976 frames per second as that same 0.1% offset for those of us in the 24 frame per second world. And we still live with these dinosaurs today when in fact the DCI spec affords us a future that will give us the opportunity to shoot part of the movie at 12 frames per second if we want, and then on the fly, during projection, skip to a reel or a scene that is projected at 48 frames per second, or any combination of frames in between. The first guy to make that movie is going to seem completely like a pioneer. Or a crackpot. I... maybe. And who cares which? I agree. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Okay, so I, I get I get the physiology trip, the the all of, all of the stuff around the shape, the headspace, the what we are in the world, and all of the technology. Because there's this rap about you know what's the first technological act of yeah. uh, is it actually the act of standing upright? I mean you're not getting hold of anything and battering anything with it, but you are actually taking your local universe, which is you know hands and feet mm -hmm. at one point, and you're saying oh, I've just shift the whole perspective. Somebody else might argue it's just getting down from the trees in the first place, but that's a that's a you know what I mean. It's the kind of where does where does that technology yeah, thing come into the mix? But what what I'm hearing you saying, and this may be a, a misunderstanding because I may be locked in into my own paradigm here. Because I was I'm in pursuit. I guess I was in pursuit of un unveiling two people who are grappling with you know they're not they they don't know that something was called phase alternate line, which mm -hmm. is why it's called PAL. They they don't know that so. Uh, or, or, or 23.97 or 20, whatever the hell, you know, the, the kind of stuff that we had to deal with. So I was kind of interested in finding the numbers in a kind I, I, I sometimes do um, papers. I've, I've done a paper called High Definition, No Mercy, because you, there's some numbers in this mix. There are some numbers in this mix that's worth knowing something about. So that was why I originally started... What, what was, numbers would they be? 
<laughs> well, what's the scan? What's the sample rate? That's a number that's really, you know, how how many times is that image sampled per per second? Yeah, there that's the widely of the sample. ignored. Yeah, but you've, you've know, got no you've got no lockdown. It seems to me on the parameters of understanding around this. Like, it seems to me like a question like, well, what do you think's next? is a completely irrelevant thing. It's 4K, 8K, 60. What the hell? Well, I, 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 wait, have, I have no vested interest in any technology. I don't make no. profit off of selling technology. And I think, I suppose, that gives me the idiot's freedom to question any parameter in, in the chain. So yeah. uh, that's the good news and the bad news about me. Uh, why does it have to be 24? Yeah. Why does it have to be 10-bit log? Yeah. Why does it have to yes. be RGB? Yeah, yeah. Why, why does it have to be anything? Yeah. You know, here's a good example. Yeah, yeah. What's the human? What's the data rate of the human brain? Well, you said 1.2. 1. 1.2 uh, gigabits a second. Yeah. Dave, what's the uh, data rate of HDSDI single channel? <laughs> Run with this one. I, I don't. I, One point two gigabits a second. I, I don't like to engage in the, the, the numerical. <laughs> okay. okay. No, it just it's no. I don't think it's happenstance that uh, uncompressed HDSDI single single channel is 1.2 gigabits a second. So if you have a let's say a Viper camera, it, it does, you know, yeah. film stream 1.2 gigabits a second. That is the same as the human data rate. So you, we've hit it. Right there's the crossover point, the nodal point, if you will. So you throw sound on top of it. Is it, is it uh, you know, why is it 5-1 sound and not 7-1 sound? Or 3-1, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? No, I hear, I hear. You know, what's to, the crossover on these things? To me, this is really about the discussion about what is or isn't good, just good enough. Right, getting beyond just just barely good enough, and yeah, and what's what's acceptable as opposed to what looks good. Yeah, and all this new the new gear coming out gives us a lot more qualitative tools, a lot more quality imbued tools than any of the analog stuff does, because the analog stuff was so deficit in its capabilities. Whereas now we've got more data rate than we can handle. We've got more, Moore's Law has finally crossed over. We've passed the nodal point. Anybody can get enough, uh, you know, a, a piece of equipment that generates more data, more <laughs> image than the human mind can comprehend. And what I find terribly amusing is that the democratization of that technology is going to filter out into the world and people are going to start making pictures and images and stories at that level of technological quality without regard for whether they can <laughs> tell a story or not. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so the studios and those who want to exploit that for profit are now obliged to watch every foot of it or some portion thereof in the name of not missing the next saw or the next Blair Witch Project? Do you know how tall the stack of cans on the executive's desks is going to become in the next two or three years? Oh, it already is. And the stuff that they have to wade through to find something profitable? Yeah. And I will argue that that benefits us all in a way because they will find some gems they will find some needles, and they will go through a haystack to do it. And I think whatever needles they find are valuable to us. And the haystack itself, the act of going through it, will generate economic transaction and benefit the community ultimately. Okay. We will, the industry will have to spend money to hire people to watch those movies to put more money back into the system. Well, and then the distribution medium, the proliferation of distribution mechanisms is is having a lot of that, uh, impact on that as well, like YouTube and mm -hmm. you know whatever. The, but you know, to come right around to res your resolution issue again, just because it's smaller doesn't mean you can use lower resolution, because 
actually the higher the resolution, the more economically something compresses. So the less noise in the city, a compression, a compression algorithm sees noise, it thinks it's image. It doesn't know the difference. It spends energy, time, and, and, and resources compressing that noise. Whereas if you shoot a, initially with a cleaner image, uh, a, a cleaner um, production environment, it's going to compress much more economically and look better at any resolution, down to iPhone. Um, so I mean, there's so many questions I want to ask you guys, but in a way, I, there's a sort of uh, there's a sort of a pointlessness to some of these questions. In a way, it's a pointlessness yeah. to everything once you pass the crossover. It, once you get past that crossover, that technological nodal point, mm -hmm. it all comes back down to craft and methodology again. Yeah. Yes. Oh, all yeah. the mythos has been taken away. All the mysticism, all the corporate intrigue, you know mm. the. We're, we're not subjected to the corporate bullies anymore. I mean, this is now, you know, we got a couple wackos running around making gear that far exceeds anything else out there. $3,000. The Scarlet comes out, it's 3,000 US, fits in your pocket, does 3K. I didn't know it was three grand. It's not been announced, but. Let's just Actually, say it was announced. Was it? Be, oh, okay. Yeah. As was the 5K <laughs> red called the, what did they call Epic. it? Epic. Epic. Yeah. The Epic. So so here you got something, and you're going, well, it's a little. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing pulls keys better than anything I've ever seen in my entire life, and we pull thousands and thousands of keys. And when you look at the trends in, in production methodology, it's definitely swinging towards more chroma keys, yeah. more yeah. virtual sets, more of that sort of stuff. And so now you're looking for something that pulls a cost-effective and easy-to-create key environment. And so now it comes back to craft and methodology. Do you understand enough about it to create the light, same lighting scenario on your plate, your mid-ground and foreground elements? Do you understand that or not? Yes. Do you understand color temperatures? Yes. Do you understand composition? Great. Well, then throw it in After Effects, take key light, and click once on the green, and it'll all go away, and you're composited. And it'll be breathtaking because there is no noise in a well shot red image. There's nothing. There's not, and the noise, it is the noise that gives you bad keys, not anything else. Mm -hmm. Bad lighting where you've blown out your, your color, your chrominance. And uh, that's about the only thing you can really do wrong. 